Hey, Homestead Prepper. Okay, today's video is for information purposes only. Guys, I'm going to be using some uh, ethanol alcohol to wash the water out of the kerosene. Uh, if you choose to do what I'm doing here, you do it at your own risk. Now guys, I don't have any control over how much ethanol you mix in with your kerosene trying to wash it out and you could, you know, burn your house down. So, information only, work at your own risk. Okay guys, if you look there on the left, that is my uh, disassembled kerosene heater, one of them. Mrs. Uh, HP, HSP is actually working on one of those perfection oil heaters right now. But uh, the video is not so much on kerosene heat as it is on testing your preps. And I uh, went to fire up that heater right there and it, it kept going out, kept going out, kept going out. So, you know, uh, I think one of the problems was is on Craigslist somebody was advertising free kerosene. So that jug that you see there on the right, that five gallon jug, that's five of about 20 gallons that I got for free. And it's very common around here, a lot of people, you know, will get rid of their kerosene heater in their tank in the back and they'll change over to, you know, electric heat and electric, you know, air conditioning or they might have air conditioning and they'll have gas heat. You know, it just, it depends. But um, it doesn't really get that cold around here. Uh, we will have some nights that it'll dip down in the teens and the 20s and it'll be like that for a couple of days. Uh, most notably back in 1989, Christmas of 89 in this area, we had some really cold temperatures around the 20s, and I, I even saw snow flurries. Um, so the local power company is called Tico. Their solution to the high demand was just to shut the power off. I mean, people were cooking their Christmas dinner, and if you had an electric oven or electric stove, you, you didn't get to finish your, your dinner, and they just cut it out. Um, now, fortunately, the house I lived in at that time had a whole house kerosene heater with the tank in the back and all that, so we were fine there. But uh, having a little backup heater here, and a lot of people around here are dependent on electricity, having a kerosene heater is just a good idea. But this uh, free kerosene I got is loaded with water, and I'm going to show you how I tested for it and how I cleaned out that uh, thing over there. But uh, let me, let's, let's get into it. Okay, I got two mason jars here. One is marked new and one is marked old. This is the free uh, old kerosene and guys I have no idea how old it is and we're gonna put a little bit of this in here that ought to be plenty. Okay that's old. I just happen to have some newer kerosene here. And we'll put a little bit of that in here. And you can see that's yellowed, but let's take a closer look at it. Really, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it. You know, it's just um, it's a little yellowed. Now that right there looks really nice. So, guys, um, what we can do to figure out if there's water in it is we can put some of this denatured alcohol in here and just put a little bit in there and if we have water, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's, uh, you can see the water in the bottom of that, it's bubbled up down there. So I did a little sample. But uh, we should get something like that if we put a little bit of this in here. So let's, uh, let's try it. Right away, that don't look good. All right, let's put a little bit in the, the clean one here. it up. Let's stir this one up. Well, they look like they both got water in them, huh? Of course, this one has a lot more <laughs> than that one does. This one is actually a couple years old. It must have attracted some water in it. So, All right, we'll let that sit. Let's 
we'll see what we get out of it. All right, let's come back to it. Okay, it's been a couple minutes here. Let's look at the one that's uh, more recent. And it looks like if there was any water in there, the ethanol absorbed it. And I don't see any bubbling or anything. That right there is probably okay to use, I'm guessing. This is the one, I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, you can see that water right there on the bottom. You can shake that up a little bit and you can see that that is just loaded with a lot of H2O. So that's why I'm having heater problems, guys. So it looks like almost like an oil lamp from the 70s. You should put lights in it. Okay, guys, I guess the moral of the story is, is all kerosene has some moisture in it. It must be hydroscopic or water seeking. Uh, this seems to have... A little bit of water in it but the uh, ethanol has absorbed it so from now on guys when I run my kerosene heater over there I'm going to only put good k1 kerosene in it and I'm gonna probably put about I don't know uh, two or three tablespoons of uh, that denatured alcohol right there now that used uh, stuff that old stuff right here uh, this is still usable guys I mean I can use this to burn stumps out or what I can do is get a big uh, a big container preferably something you can see in and suck the good kerosene off the top and leave that nasty water there on the bottom and that will effectively clean it up okay guys I've made a uh, reactor so to speak out of PVC and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash all that kerosene I need a little larger vessel I guess a five gallon bucket would work but um, uh, this right here is just uh, something I just threw together, kind of reminiscent of the PVC gas tank for the pressure washer. I've got that little shut-off valve right there, as you can see. And what I'm going to do is put that old kerosene in there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of uh, alcohol, ethanol, denatured alcohol in there. And I'll let it sit for a little while. And then what I'll do is I'll drain it off the bottom the water and the nasty stuff and then the rest of it I'll put that in a uh, new container and that'll be my uh, I guess my I don't know cleaned up kerosene dewatered kerosene whatever you want to call it so let me uh let me get some stuff poured in there All right, guys, I'm guessing that's about one gallon. So I'm not really sure how much uh, ethanol I have to add to it. So we're going to go with um, my mason jar is graduated here. That's 100 milliliters, 200 milliliters. And we have uh, four ounces, eight ounces. You know, it's in cups and all that. So I don't know. Let's just put a little in there and we'll try it. Put too much and then we don't want to not use enough so so that was about a gallon that uh, filled up that little makeshift reactor right there and I don't know I'm gonna guess that's about a hundred milliliters that's a little less than four ounces here I guess so okay we'll try that all right let's uh, let's pour this in here All right, I need to get something to stir that up with because I want it to mix. So let me uh, let me stir that up with something clean. 
All right, I've got just a piece of aluminum I've wiped down right here, so let's uh, see if we can stir that up. And I've got a uh, test cap right here it's not real heavy duty it's just to keep the bugs out of it so we'll just put that in there and we'll let that set for I don't know I don't really know how long we'll let it set for but we'll uh, we'll let it set till it all calms down and then we'll, we'll drain out the bottom and we'll see if we got some good kerosene in there all right it's just been a few minutes here and you can see that stuff looks uh, pretty funky in there. I may put a little more ethanol in there. Alright, well that looks a lot better like it's uh, reacting more like it did in the jar. Of course I had a higher concentration of alcohol in there. So, alright, I'm going to let that set for, I don't know, I may let it set overnight. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll drain off the bottom and we'll see if we got some good clean kerosene. We'll see if we were able to wash it. All right, this has been sitting out here for a little while, and I, I kind of reinforced it with a uh, a piece of pie pie stuck in the ground. So let's uh, let's turn that on and let's see what uh, what we get out of here with this. Just turn it on. And see what comes out. Well, you can see right there, guys, uh, that looks like a whole lot of water in that kerosene, if you can, if you can see that. So, let's, uh, let's get another one and let's see if we got it all. We didn't get it all. see we still got more more water in there let's uh let's dump that out let's do it till it runs clear right, well that looks a lot better guys Still got a little bit in there, so I don't know if that's residue or what. Do a little more. All right, well that is some clean kerosene right there. You can see that, that stuff is cleaned up beautifully. You've gotten all the water out of it. Water's heavier than the uh, kerosene. It's bonded with the uh, ethanol. Now there's probably some ethanol alcohol mixed in here with the kerosene and that's fine. That just, well, if any more water gets in there, it should absorb it and it should make my heater work okay. So, but that is what we uh, ended up with and this is how much we had to pull out of here. So. It's about 300 milliliters or I guess a little bit more than a cup. But you can see how nasty that is in there and that's why my kerosene heater would not work. So, so I'm going to wash all of it. You got the before and then you got the after. And this after, well, I mean it looks good enough to drink. Not that I would drink it, but <laughs> okay, uh, let me uh, 
get another thing and siphon that off right there. And that, that thing right there holds about a gallon. Now this is just an old one of these that I got left over. I'm just going to fill this up and I'll mark it kerosene on here. shot of that and I got a catch pan down there just in case any spills it's a little crude but effective but uh, it's a lot easier than holding it all right well there we go guys that's about full right there let's just take a look down in here looks like there's a little I don't know something in there but anyway I cut it off before it completely went out I'm gonna put another gallon or so in here that's about what this holds and we'll uh, we'll wash it one gallon at a time so if I had a bigger container I could uh, well I guess I could do all 20 gallons at once but uh, this right here is going to work for my for my needs I don't really use a whole lot of kerosene right now and if I run across some more contaminated kerosene well I got a way to clean it up right now and the proof is in the pudding guys that's how much water was in one gallon of that free kerosene and this is the cleaned up after I just want to show you guys this is the before this is the during and this is the after after it's been washed so you can see that that free kerosene I got it actually looks pretty good but you can see the amount of water that's actually in it that the uh, alcohol was able to pull out and this is the uh, after after it's been washed and we've gotten all the water out of it so we got before during after Okay, I got it uh, sort of put back together. And what you got to do is brush the top of the wick here after you let it burn out. Do that. And we'll go ahead and light it. Oh, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to light right there. Okay, guys, like I said, it does not have an electric start on it, so you kind of have to do this manually. And if you're fast, you can drop that thing on there, and it won't burn your fingers. So let's uh, let's see how that does. We'll put the lid back on. And we'll see if it'll give us any heat. Back over there, and you can't really see it, but you can hear it. So let's see how that does. Okay guys and gals, you can see out there that this uh, thing is really kicking butt right now. And this has only been on like a minute or two and this thing is already red hot here. Uh, this is definitely throwing out a lot more heat. What it was doing before is it wouldn't even glow red, it would just go out. So combination of bad kerosene with water in it and uh, the wick needed to be burned out and cleaned a little bit has resulted in when and if and when it gets cold and my power goes out uh, or if I'm going to work out here in my uh, my shop I I'm going to stay warm okay so this thing is uh, let's see what kind of temperatures we got here I don't know if you can see that or not Seven seventy-five. well that's pretty darn hot so I'm going to let that burn for a little while and just make sure that it keeps burning and it doesn't go out. But uh, I think that was that was what was wrong, guys. The contamination of the wick with water in the free kerosene. And now when I get ready to use my prep, it's hopefully going to work. 
overall we're going to call this a, a success. Let's turn the light on. So. Okay. Homestead prepper out.